3 p.m. turn at Lenny Quatrebra. Let's begin by reviewing the previous two turns. Started with maneuver units. The Allies don't have much to work with. The French will continue pushing. The French have a great number of command points they're using over here at Lenny, while the Prussians will continue reorganizing. The big fat draw cup. The first shit drawn is the French. They're going to take advantage of yet another double move. They're going to charge to try to clear out that Dutch Belgian cavalry. Without a reaction charge, they can push home their attacks, except Van Merlin does manage to reaction. That'll push him forward and engage with the French. Now the Lancers will also move forward and join the melee. Melees don't quite go as the French would like. The first attack ends up with a dagger disorder, which will cause a casualty and a plus grand disorder for that for those chasseurs, and they will retreat. The other attack is a little more in their favor. They end up with a pretty decent result. Not only do they get a disorder, but they also kill Van Merlin. So Van Merlin gone, casualty and a retreat for the uh, Dutch cavalry there. And everyone finishes their charges in various states of distress. On the knee field, the fourth light cavalry is going to charge, try to dislodge that brigade from the tomb. The uh, reaction charges fail, so they're able to drive home their attacks from the rear. Seems kind of strange, but hey, they didn't react. These aren't especially great attacks, but they do cause some casualties, which is more or less what they're after, and kind of disabling this cavalry brigade so they can't move against the infantry the French want to move forward. It's a very similar outcomes for both, inflicting some casualties and taking a few themselves. The rest of the French maneuver turn has the uh, Lenny field or the Quadra field moving forward, and then Lenny, the third and Corps and Gerard's Corps are starting to make contact. And some little uh, maneuvering on the cavalry. A defensive fire, offensive fire is exchanged across the lines with varying degrees of outcomes. It's two leaders are harmed. That's the biggest outcome. That's going to affect the command structure very greatly on both sides. For the French at Ligny, they attempt some attacks and both fail the pre-melee morale checks as well as an assault failure, cause retreats. On the Quatrebra field, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, some casualties and some retreats. But the French did make some decent progress. The rest of the turn will play out with the different shit poles. Finally, the Allies are able to move. They don't have a lot to work with. For the um, Quatrebra field, it's mainly the deployment of pack. On the Lenny field, it's moving up and trying to concentrate in front of the French. Another full draw cup as Wellington was able to get more of his forces moving. See a lot of movement here, trying to get the uh, Allied side up to speed. The French were moving forward, largely a lot, a lot of contact this turn because of the fallback and disintegration of the Dutch Belgian division. But without the fifth division leader, they were unable to move on the on the right of the French line. At Lenny, the fourth chord stormed across the brook with varying degrees of success. 
as the third corps remained largely stymied, the seventh division was able to assault and remove the artillery battery that was opposed to it. The interesting thing was the land there turned into the land where when they retreated due to morale failures from a, a, a cascading morale effect. And the third corps continued, continued to, co to consolidate over. So the first effect of the land there morale rules, most prominently right here, this was a full line of land there opposing the French. Fire combat caused some casualties and morale checks. And one failed, and then the others failed, and then they kept contacting each other and ended up plus grand disorder back here. Similar over here. A failure of one unit caused a morale check and a cascading effect. So the land there is definitely proving more brittle than I remember them. These are our current leader casualties. Van Merlin, the Dutch Belgian Cavalry Brigade leader, is killed. Two leaders from the Dutch Belgian Infantry, division commander and brigade, are both wounded. The respective numbers are the number of turns before they can return. And then the 5th Division here on the 2nd uh, Corps for the French is also out for another 13 turns. So that's going to cause pretty big disruption in the command for the French, certainly. To some extent, the uh, Allies, because now that whole Dutch-Belgian contingent is really lacking leadership. On to the command phase, with Wellington present on the Quatre Bras field now, uh, command points on that side are yielded from his ride and any of his ADCs that can activate someone. So Wellington was able to ride to two brigades. He had one ADC which was able to fly to another. So combined with the four standard Prussian command points, the Allies have seven to the um, French seven. The French can still try to test for light cavalry readiness for several of their units. Looking south at Quatre Bras, see the Allied command points allocated here. Failed to get light cavalry initiative. The Brunswickers, so they're stuck. And looking north, the French are going to maneuver the Second Corps, which really only consists of this division here. Spend another point here on the 6th Division. Failed to get light cavalry initiative here for their light cav, so that's going to hurt. They really wanted to get up this gap. Probably should have spent a point on that, but felt like it was needed elsewhere. Sticking with the French, looking northeast. Spent a point on the 7th Division here. The um, 11th Division going this direction. Tested for light cavalry and gained another maneuver unit here. For the 3rd Corps light cavalry, probably don't even need it, but never hurts to have it. And now a little further east, looking north. Spending a lot of capital here to get the 4th Corps moving. All three infantry divisions and the cavalry are now activated. This is from um, Light Cavalry Initiative. Right over here is Napoleon, and he has restacked with Von Damme and Gerard to get the, both those corps activated. Hopefully no one finds him exposed like that. But, act, but spending one point on each of those corps wouldn't have got us anywhere because they don't have any um, units in command. Looking from the other side, Prussians are going to keep the 1st Corps activated, spend the command point on them. Then they're going to try to keep some of this cavalry at the ready to counter and possibly counterattack the French that have crossed the brook. And lastly, the 4th Brigade, which is essentially behind Ligny here, is seeing that they're not going to be facing much of an attack, so they're probably going to try to support this direction. The draw cup still favors the French. Sometimes that's the only reason to test for light cavalry readiness. Get some more chits in the cup. Give yourself a better chance to draw. Let's just draw the first chit. And it's the French, of course.
So Quattro Barra just at pushing the sixth division here, very hard on the, the French left. This whole area is completely devoid of troops. Their only real objective is to get astride the road, try to make it hard for the uh, remainder of the line. Maybe a little easier for the ninth division here, which is a little more tangled up in the woods than I would like. But they have contact with a couple of units here. They'll be able to maybe knock them back. The artillery is starting to gather here. I think the plan will be to get them pointed at the crossroads and start pounding away at the tougher British opponents. And the 5th Division remains without a leader. This is the ADC of the 2nd Corps. He's going to try to take over. That means they're at least another turn away from actually maneuvering as a combat force. And unfortunately, the light cavalry did not have any command points and therefore it's still just sort of milling about south of the orchard. And Lenny, the 7th Division, is facing a fair amount of Lanver there, so we're going to try to just throw some um, fire at them, see if they can disorder take themselves out of the fight. Otherwise, we're going to try to soften up these positions with some musketry before we assault them. Do have two, or three rather, assaults going in here. Um, this one is adjacent to a unit in woods. He did not have enough movement points remaining to be able to enter that hex, so he couldn't assault it. So he'll just lay some fire on them and see if they can get them to disorder. The divisions of the 4th Corps maneuvered individually. 13th Division just sort of crossed the stream here and is trying to get behind into the flank of the Prussian line. Going to try to draw, drive home a couple of assaults here and here. They also formed some squares here because of this cavalry that's opposite them. They got the jump with the first move so they were able to uh, probably thwart the efforts of these uh, troopers. Two other assaults are going to try to go in against the core artillery. They tried it last turn and got bloody pretty heavily. They'll try it again this turn and see if they can knock those guns out. And one division of the light cavalry moved over here. It's basically completing the screening of the right flank. There's a bunch of cavalry over there. Of course they know they see a very large mass of Prussians. Not sure what they're going to do, so they're going to keep on their toes. Now for defensive fire here at Quatre Bras, all those little spots with the white axes are points where the allies can fire defensively. Over here we see some French units uh, adjacent to this one, but that's actually not a unit. Those are just a stack of leaders. The French are just going to pot shot at them and hopefully get a kill. Pretty unlikely, but just worth a shot. Better than entering the hex and just displacing them. So we'll throw some dice and see what happens. No luck. All the dice throws were low, so there were no casualties uh, inflicted on the Quattro Bra field. Quite a few more fires at Lenny because of the large area of confrontation and all of the white X's are where we're going to have our fires, so we'll throw some dice. Prussians are shooting a lot straighter. We see some casualties inflicted here. Everywhere I have a little white X. I have a casualty and a retreat here from a failed morale check. And really importantly, we're blowing up more of the French command. These guns right here, the Prussian artillery. Blue holes, huge holes in these French battalions, killing the divisional leader of the 4th Corps, the 14th Division. So the troops managed to survive the morale check, but another big command hole. And a couple more spots where these assaulting units uh, took some casualties, so they'll be affected in their uh, melee phase. But otherwise, that'll be the end of the defensive fire. French threw back their offensive fire, not to very good effect. Either one white X or casualty. 
and a few more along the line of the villages. But no uh, serious morale check failures. So not the cascading uh, retreats that the French are hoping for over here. Better fire for the French here at Quatre Bras. Big one with these skirmishers fired on the cavalry, which inflicted the casualties and a morale check failure, and they routed back to these trees. Here we fired on this stack of leaders, just trying to snipe somebody. We came so close through a 63. So, no damage, but kind of fun. Off in the woods, some more casualties here here and here, but no failed morale checks. And then over here as well, that lone Nassar sitting out there. So that'll conclude the fire phases. We'll move on to melee. There aren't any assaults declared at Quatre Bras, so we'll just start here at Ligny. I think I'm going to call off one assault as being illegal. Right here. I believe the gate is right there, so I'm on the wrong side and cannot assault. So I just misread that. That's illegal. So we'll go to the one right next to it. We have five increments of the land there against, oops, let's see, five increments of the French infantry assaulting. They uh, pass pre-melee morale checks. They are both 15 melee units, each seven increments with two losses, so it's going to be a one-to-one. -one. And the dice yield a blank. So that means they each take a loss and check morale. Prussians are a 33. They pass their check. The French are a mighty 16. And when you know, we rolled a 12. So that means they will disorder and retreat. So they will, I think, go one, two, and stop right there, taking their third increment loss. And the Prussians will stay in the structure, also having taken their third increment loss. I'm going to go one more for the French. They're an eight movement factor, so that's half. And the other assault here on this side is right here against that little unit. This is going to be a very uh, unfair attack. That is a one increment company. The Jaeger's in disorder. That's going to be four to one odds. I don't see them standing. And they do fail, so that means they'll disorder and retreat. Now, that land wire could become a land wear if he fails due to the morale effects of involuntary movement. So, I'll scroll out. He would have to retreat here. I would cause a morale check on this guy, who has a leader with him, but he is a 31 morale. So he had a poor roll, resulting in a plus chron disorder and therefore a retreat. I'm trying to think of what his best route out of here is. I think right through here. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six to the cultivated. And he did not brush up against any other land there, so he should be safe right there. And the French will just occupy that hex. Moving a little to the east, we have these difficult attacks against the artillery, and then hopefully some better positions against some infantry farther east there. First up, we'll throw this infantry against that artillery. Four increments of infantry in column against two of the artillery. 
got a pre-melee morale check. Unfortunately, we rolled a 22, 26 morale, a disorder, and that means the guns are destroyed or, you know, disabled. Could possibly be recovered later. We'll just advance the French. Call that a success. Move on to the next one. That would be this assault against these guns. Now this battalion was hit pretty hard with defensive fire. There's only two increments remaining. That's going to be a one-to-one -one odds on the pre-melee morale check. Now the artillery passes their pre-melee morale check. The French unit has really excellent morale. But with such heavy losses, especially in the preceding defensive fire phase, it just can't can't drive home. So they disorder and then they'll retreat. So moving back to there. That leaves us with two more attacks. First we have one against some infantry in the flank. That could be a promising one for the French. Now it's six increments assaulting eight, but in the flank, that'll be one to two odds in the flank modifier plus the leader. The odds will be one and a half to one with the flank attack modifier and a minus one die roll. Final roll is a 42, that's just one loss for each. No morale checks, no retreats. So not a great outcome for the French. If here with a flank attack, they hope to rout that guy at the very least, or disorder him at the very least, I think. It's a little disappointing. We have one more shot right here. Against a disordered unit, that should be a bit of an advantage for the French. That's a large Lanvar unit with one loss, so it's going to be one to two odds, but they are disordered. So, hmm, that's pretty, pretty friendly, actually. They do just manage to pass with that uh, leader that they're stacked with there. French didn't fare so well. They do fail and have to disorder. So they will fall back. They don't have a good place to go here, do they? They're kind of boxed in. That's two. They could move three and four right through there. That would cause a morale check on that French unit. Wish they do pass handling. Had high hopes for those two attacks and didn't get much out of them at all. I think that will conclude our assault and melee phase. Reasonably successful with rally, able to recover most of the units here along the stream that were thrown back. Unable to recover that unit that failed its pre melee morale check. But otherwise, that brings us to the conclusion of the French chit. Continued pushing and harassing here along the brook very stubbornly trying to take the Prussian gun line. Had a little bit of luck, but at a pretty high cost. This area here was a big disappointment that they weren't able to drive home some of those assaults and push back the, uh, the Prussians. Obviously they're trying to open a gap here, trying to get to the open, open areas back in the second tier. Of course that's no bargain. They chew themselves up getting across the stream only to face the mass of the Austrian, or the Prussian rather, second, second corps there. So, see how that goes. Here at Quattro Bra, it's largely massing the 9th Division there. They're even starting to look like a spearhead. The goal is to get the artillery up and start pounding away at the front, or the British positions along the road. While well, here on this side, 6th Division is just steadily forcing its way forward. 
probably should have tried to assault some of those units, but I thought I might be able to get them with gunfire alone. But they're making good progress, and the Anglo army in front of them is pretty weak at this point. Cup is still full of French chits, but we'll draw our next one. Oh, we know the Allies. So another busy half turn here for the players. At Linny, we allocated these Prussian command points with the idea of maybe trying to charge some of that cavalry. With the French forming squares, made it a little more difficult. We do have one very white, ripe target right here. Not only is he uh, within range of some dragoons, he's also got his back turned to us, so we won't be able to try to form square. So we're going to go ahead and charge that regiment of this fourth maneuver unit. Probably leave it just at that. I don't see any other good targets. On the plus side, he is coming at him from out of his front facing, so he can't try to form square. Bad side, he can't get a full, let's see, a three movement points. So I think I will try to hit him in the flank right there. He's going to have to stand, no other option, for that charge. With a morale of 24, charged in the flank. Excuse me, 21 was his morale. He rolled a very high number, so he's going to pass and stand. That'll conclude the movement of that unit. Since I don't have any other charges, I'm just going to go straight to the um, defensive fire and then the melee phase. Now, during the charge, in the melee segment, there's a defensive fire. You know, only the target of the charge can give defensive fire. So even though this square is right there, they can't fire on that uh, cavalry because they're not the target. So there was no opportunity to fire, no defensive fire. We'll just go straight to melee. I'm kind of on the fence. If I charge them in the flank, I could get a 5 to 1, or I could try to preserve readiness which would be a one and a half to one attack. So I think I'm going to go with a full-on charge, not going to preserve readiness. Go ahead with a five to one, which of course yields a route PGD. So that will be an increment loss and a retreat. Don't have a good route to go there either. If I look at my path of retreat here, I don't like where I can go. He treats this way. He goes through another zone of control, zone of influence. I don't like that. If he goes this way, he has to go through his own men. Mm. Can't get through the cavalry. Don't have a good way to go. I'm going to retreat him right through here. I can get him to here and a loss of two increments. So that's a tough loss for the French. Moral of that story is don't overexpose your infantry in front of enemy cavalry. Here the cavalry is going to end tired, or excuse me, exhausted. We still have the rest of the fourth and really the rest of the maneuver units to go ahead and move. So we will go ahead with that. Kind of helpless over here at Quatre Bras. Just don't have a force here on the right 
to uh, oppose the French. Didn't even have anybody much in command at the end there. So weren't able to really affect much of anything. The best thing we did was cut these guns right here in the crossroads. See if they'll keep back the French. Didn't shift the Prussians too much. Maybe the biggest thing I did was possibly cheat, I'm not sure. But these two horse batteries I think are technically core assets well out of range of the Corps commander, but they were right there with that brigade, so I said to hell with it, they're attached to that brigade. And I moved them forward to try to put some fire on these French squares. For defensive fire, the French have four targets here, so we will throw the dice and see if we can do any damage. After the dice were thrown, we inflict one casualty on these Dutch Jaegers. No morale checks. Around Lenny, there are a lot of targets. Obviously, they're engaged in this entire arc here. Lots of dice to throw. We'll see what happens. After throwing a bunch of dice, we had casualties inflicted in a few spots. A big event was morale check failure here which caused a retreat and then a cascading failure of this land very unit here who then routed away. Let's turn it around and do the offensive fire. The Prussians can fire back along t at targets along the same mark here all along the villages. No damage done along the villages here artillery at these point-blank ranges was able to inflict some damage on these two French battalions but didn't uh, cause a morale check so they remain in place. Since I forgot this battalion here I went ahead and allowed an exchange of fires between this battalion and these two resulting in a casualty and a morale check failure here for the Nassau. Otherwise we have just a couple of targets here for the Allies. And no casualties inflicted. So I'll bring it into the fire phase. Since we had no melees declared, we went straight to rally and route movement. See the Dutchers at the Belgian cavalry still won't rally, along with some Nassars, but this cavalry has rallied. We had some retreats because Again, failure to rally. Very bad result right here, right at the crossroads. At a failure to rally here, they retreated through the British and Hanoverians, who each disordered and retreated themselves. So we have a big lot of poor morale state units right there. Though probably not going to hurt the crossroads too much, it might be an opening that the French could exploit if they get the opportunity to move first. The Prussians actually did pretty well, rallied quite a few, though they did have a retreat here, as well as one failure here that did not cause a cascade effect, so that was a good thing. But otherwise, they kind of maintained their position. And with that, I think we'll have the conclusion of the Allied Chitral. So the draw could be full, it's really only the action chits we're looking to uh, draw out now. So we have a regroup. It's not going to matter which order we pull these chits really, I don't think. But uh, we'll do regroup here. Not a lot of regroup here at Lenny. The guard continues to kind of kedge its way to the east. We did finally get the Prussian horse artillery off the tomb. They limbered and were now moving to get themselves back to their own lines. Otherwise, not a lot of out-of-command units here on this field. Quatre bras, I'm going to have to consult the rule book here. The idea behind regroup is to move back to your um, to the leader that's in command of the formation. Well, everybody in the second Dutch Belgium has been wiped out. The um, especially the byland, and 
that means there's no one in charge of his units. I have, I think, where is he? Maybe this ADC of the first core. Oops, can see him? He is right here. I think I could designate him the successor and have him take over and then have everyone regroup towards him. That's tentatively what I'm going to do, barring any uh, prohibitions by the rules. So I'm, I'm going with that. I shifted some of these out of command units back towards essentially this area here. Uh, the Saxon Weimar is here. The ADC is there. That's going to concentrate the second Dutch Belgian, what remains of it. The French actually have a lot of units out of command in the 5th Division, but the ADC to take over that division is here. I don't want them all moving towards him, so I'm just going to leave them alone and let him go take command when he gets there. Next chit. Going to have to go through a bunch of, oh well, not, not too many. Now we have artillery. We really only have Grand Battery and Howitzer. We know we have the Prussian Howitzer. There is the Howitzer. And behind him, this is the ammunition wagon that I forgot to resupply. Uh, I've been expecting ammunition, but kind of carelessly neglecting to try to resupply during the reorg phase. So that means no supply for them. That's, that's bad. I probably have a few more wagons I need to replenish. Make sure I remember to do that in the reorganization segments. There's only two chits remaining we're interested in. Might have to draw a bunch of MUs for the sides, but there we have leaders, so we can go ahead and move our leaders around. Not a lot to do with that, I don't think, but we'll, uh, we'll see how that plays out. Not a tremendous amount of repositioning, but here at Lenny, getting Von Damme back within, within span of Napoleon activated and within range of his division leaders, as well as Gerard over here. Same situation, activated within uh, command span, and also getting his ADC to take over the 14th Division. That'll help the French cause a little bit. No real movement by the Prussians, other than we just relocated the marshal right here to try to rally another uh, routed land bear unit. And over Quatre Bar, we just moved Ney and his ADC to be within range of this 5th Division. I think he'll just take these units and try to get them combined and consolidated with the rest of the division. Yet another turn squandered, really. But otherwise, the other leaders had already moved and are going to stay where they are. He only leaves one more chit in the cup we're interested in. Rather than go through the ceremony of picking, we're just going to go with the reinforcement the only reinforcements being the balance of the Brunswick contingent here at Quatre Bras. The Light and the Line Brigade are marching down towards the crossroads. With the draw cup empty, I think that'll bring a close to our 1500 turn. Let's take a final look at where we left things. Things are definitely going to start to stabilize here at Quatre Bras. The Breakdown in command for each side, with the loss of the leaders, has slowed each down, robbing them each of a division to maneuver. And the French, now that they're spreading out on both sides of the road, are seeing they can't maneuver the entire second corps. They have to use that second command point to move either the infantry of the 6th Division or the cavalry. And that's going to uh, definitely slow them down, even though they have this huge open flank. They may not be able to take maximum advantage of it without uh, sort of freezing the center of the of the army. And the Allies are seeing some reinforcements come in. The Brunswick contingent is going to help. And shortly they'll start receiving the rest of the 1st Corps right along the road here, coming up on the 6th Division. So that'll be interesting to see how those two forces start to clash. I think the British Guard Division will start to arrive. 
could make it very tough on the French. But so far, Allies still in control of the crossroads. Here, Lenny, the, the slog at the villages is going as expected. The um, stupid <laughs> play by the by the player, leaving the uh, third and fourth corps unactivated, cost us a lot of command to move things in the last turn. But now that those two formations are back, able to maneuver as a full corps, we'll have a lot of different command points to use, probably here on the guard and possibly on this heavy cavalry. But this has been a tough spot to hit right here, trying to take the guns with a mass of infantry and also cavalry behind them. It has proved as tough as it was expected to be. Maybe tougher than going after the town. But I know from experience the town usually just ends up being very slow, a lot of assaults and recoils, and very hard to get across that, that stream. So that was the purpose of going here. The Prussians have been able to leave the Second Corps completely alone, saving their command points for the main fight where it is. And also, it's looking more and more likely we're going to see some of that command spread over here to the Third Corps with the faint, if not a full-on, attack. It seems like there's a, an opportunity here more for more than just a feint. The one thing that gets in our way is really the, the weaker quality of this third core. I think they'd be okay on, a, on the defense, as you see a couple of days later, but um, we might give a shot at putting them on the offensive. I, I don't know that I want to use the second core, even though it's pretty big and pretty strong as an offensive unit. I think I want to use them defensively to parry any of the blows coming from the French here and hopefully keep them so so occupied that they won't be able to do anything about an attack from this direction. That's the 1500 turn. We're going to play two more before we check in again.